Hey everyone, happy Saturday. Shanta Jackson here. I am a leader, mother, and social entrepreneur with a vision to help people to help themselves and others. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, so please do enter your comments and your questions in the chat box. As always, we'll have an interactive and engaging uh, conversation today. Um, before I bring my next guest on, I just kind of wanted to check in with everyone to see how you're doing. Um, you know, make sure you check in with your, with your city. I want to know what city you're, you're watching from. And then also, we are in the first quarter. We're in February. And some of us set goals for the new year. And so um, let me know. Let me know um, what is it that you set for your goal. And if you are continuing with that or if you're seeing growth, you know, um, basically what I want you to do is to tell me something positive about yourself. And um, as always, you can learn more about me. Visit my website at shantajackson.com. My book, The Journal of a Woman with Lived Experiences, a 21-day guided journal, is on sale. It's actually half off or um, buy, I think it's I think it's buy two for the price of one. That's it, buy two for the price of one. So yeah, go ahead and check in and let me know. We have um, Brandarius. Brandarius is checking in from Las Vegas. Thank you. And Brandarius is actually a former guest. So please do scroll my YouTube channel um, as well to watch that interview with Brandarius. Thanks for watching. And so my next guest, he is the founder and CEO of a company called Inception. And Inception is branded as the first mental health gym. And, uh, and so our guest is David. David Dave, excuse me, David McCuller, and he is going to talk to us about brain health and his program through his company Inception, and it is a brain therapy training program. So we'll learn about that and how that program helps us to um, address and deal with stress and trauma and then also the um, various benefits of his, his program. So everyone at this time, please welcome David. Hey, David, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, Santa. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining me. Um, you brand yourself as, or you refer to yourself as an inner seeker. And based off of the things that I've, I've watched a few of your interviews on, um, on different platforms, mostly Instagram, um, I watch your lives and, and, and you serving as a guest on other platforms people's platforms and you refer to yourself as an inner seeker and I see you as a social entrepreneur and then also as a thought leader um, and, and and you're on the path to be or I don't know if you consider yourself as a philosopher a modern day philosopher or not but um, I do like your insight and so I like to bring on individuals that I feel that can inspire and inform my guests and serve as a resource. And I saw that in you. So that's why I invited you. So thank you for being here today. Well, thank you. I appreciate all of those uh, acknowledgements. You know, I don't necessarily call myself things that a lot of other people, they put their titles on, you know, who they think that I am. And that's, that's fine. Thought leader entrepreneur. I mean, we wear, as yourself, we wear many hats these days. So we're a little something of everything. Okay. And, um, but you do, I see uh, on your website, I see inner seeker. I see that language. Could you explain to us what an inner seeker is or how you define that? Right. And the reason why we came up with the term seeker and, and, and for a lot of people that may sound woo woo -y or whatever. But the, the truth is that when I was dealing with anxiety and panic attacks 14 years ago um, and I go the traditional route of, you know, talk therapy or medication, which are which are uh, helpful resources. But for me, I, I, I felt like there were different things out there that would benefit me. But I had to seek those things out like they, they weren't just commonplace so in seeking those out you know that's what i mean by seeking like people our clients who come to us our clients are come to us they're seeking out the tools to better themselves and so that's what it means to be a, a, a inner seeker someone who's who wants to one check out their internal makeup 
that's inside, their world on the inside, that's where everything is created, first of all, inside of you. All your thoughts, emotions, all inside of you. So to kind of dive deep into that, well, what, why are you thinking what you're thinking? And why do you feel what you feel? And that's a part of being an inner seeker is to really tap into yourself, tap into your internal resources and understand why you have them or why you don't have them. And this is the same thing that happens when you go to talk therapy. A talk therapist is just there to be the mirror for you to be again, to see your own self. So that's what it means to be an inner seeker, someone who's actively and passionately going out there to better themselves and willing to go inward to do that internal work. And you believe that everyone has some type of the just through lived experience and just through life that everyone has some type of either physical injury or psychological injury can and um and then there's also so so with that there's the um i guess the impact or there comes the stress and the trauma but what before we talk about stress and trauma and the actual um the your format for your brain therapy training program what brought you into this space well again i was a inner, a inner seeker for myself before um having anxiety and panic attacks this is from my experience in my own traumas in my own life you know i used to have vomiting panic attacks i mean i became very reclusive at one point because I could no longer do the things that I used to enjoy. So um, that's what brought me into this field, even though I was already, um, I enjoy human performance and how can we better ourselves? That's something that I enjoy. And it just so happened that, you know, I was experiencing those symptoms in my life. So that just, that gave me more reason to dive deeper into that world. And that's how I really kind of got into the alternative health world and went down that rabbit hole and just kept learning more and more things. And it's, it's really comprehensive. And that's how Inception is. It's comprehensive. And I, I know you, you use the term brain training program, but it's not just a brain training program. We have it's brain body. It's it's all of you, you know, and we use different. We over, use over six different technologies to to help you support your systems. Like so that's how I got into it, just for my own basic desire to improve myself and not live a life filled with anxiety and depression I and mean, those things are a part of life but to be stuck in that place and that's where i was i was stuck dealing with anxiety and panic attacks my cup was filled up i could take no more in so i needed to go through that journey of releasing and that's something that you know i've been doing for the last 15 years going on 15 years now Okay, now walk us through Inception. Um, walk us through the experience. I I visit your website and I see that you have different circuits. Um, do I make a phone? Do I call first? Is there some type of consultation? Walk me through the process. So there's there's multiple ways that you can go through Inception, and it's just like the, the typical gym as well. So if you go to a traditional gym, if you decide to go to that gym and do your own research on the technologies there and you go in and you work out on your own merit correct so if you go to our place it's a similar thing as well person can see the things that we have and say hey i just want to go through the program i just want to experience and that's fine and then you have another set of people another group of people and i probably fell more into this group when you know when i first went through my experience in 2007 which is i'm at my wit's end I try what I know um, at that time to better myself, whether it's, you know, traditional medication through the medication, of, you know, so I'm, I'm at my wit's end and I need something that's going to really help pull me out of the deficit that I'm in. So somebody like me, we, we, you know, we do a, um, a consultation. It just basically is a, in a questionnaire to really see where you're starting at. And we recommend or suggest people do a boot camp program. And our boot camp program is four days. And within those four days, you have experienced um, basically a collective of 12 different services, not different services, but 12 services within that time frame, because you need 
someone like me, we need to come out of the deficit, someone who we're in a position I'm in. And then you have those people who are just, I'm just trying to improve performance. I'm not necessarily doesn't feel like I have any type of thing going on that I can call out to you, but I, I know I can better myself. So so you have three different groups of people. Um, if you're a person who's more, again, you've been dealing with some things for a long time and you're looking to kind of come out of a deficit, we do re recommend going through that consultation, going through a boot camp program, four day experience of brain reset circuit and detox circuit within those four day time frame. And then we kind of, we follow up with you on the back end. And then we also uh, recommend doing like an ongoing maintenance, whether it's a membership or doing another boot camp. Because the thing is with our services, they're not one and done. The same way with the tr traditional gym, you don't go work out once and then you're done. This is this is something that, that can support you for the rest of your life when it comes to your, your internal makeup. Okay. And when you um, started talking about inception, you used the term alternative, but I would think that it's more so complementary um, to complement. It's I think it's more so of a, a lifestyle. So like you mentioned with the gym, you can work out, but there's certain there's a certain type of a diet that will complement and your workout routine right and there's there's your sleep and there's your life and there's those other factors um tell us a little bit about the actual technology um i've seen that there's um a, some type of laptop there's a laptop and there's some type of some patches or something that are that are, that are put on the temples of the head so explain what's going on there so that's called neurofeedback neurofeedback has over a at this point, 50 year history on neurofeedback. What we're doing is placing sensors on the scalp and we're actually going to the central region of the brain. And so what's happened is when we place those sensors on the scalp is non invasive, it's not electroshock therapy. Nothing is actually going through the sensors. There's information. We're capturing that brain's information. And what the computer does is it calculates the brain's electromagnetic frequencies in real time based on, again, where we place the sensors at. The computer is taking in that data and then it sends it back to you in a, a pair of headphones. You have music within the headphones, but the music is not is not the thing that's helping the brain to become self-aware. The music is just, you know, um, a, a holder, a placeholder, mind you, help you with more relaxation. But the when there's skips, pauses and interrupts within the music, that's when your brain, your nervous system is going into these different patterns of I say fight, flight, freeze response, you're moving out of the present moment. And then the brain can can pick up that information. The brain can begin to, to change itself. So with that program, we're not pushing the brain to do anything. We're only allowing the brain to become self-aware because in quantum theory, there's a there's a statement that um, you know, whatever you observe changes. Well, we all know that, right? We all that's why we all have mirrors in our home. We're going from a, a mirror to be able to observe ourselves to make the necessary changes. Well, your brain is not self-aware. So your brain having a mirror to see how it's, it's operating in real time in terms of your again, your central nervous system, the brain can see that, hey, I'm stuck in I'm stuck in this pattern. Like I'm I'm in fight, flight, freeze, which is nothing but, you know, defense mechanism. The brain can make this decision whether it wants to come out of that pattern. And typically the brain does start to regulate itself and come out of that pattern. And that's all happening at 33 minutes when you do uh, the brain training session. It's very relaxation, relaxing. You're in a zero gravity chair. You have an eye mask on your eyes. Again, you have music there. You don't have to sit there and consciously participate. That's not what that's about. Nothing really at inception involves your conscious participation because we don't need you as a conscious participator for the most part. We just need you to sit down, relax, and allow the, the systems to support the internal systems of your body. And once it does, does that, your brain and body can start to adapt to a, a different level of um, homeostasis based on the stimulus that is up against, which is typically nothing or relaxation is the stimulus that you're getting now. It's reduced stimulus in the brain adjusts that. And so um, recap for the audience and for everything that I just heard you say. So my interpretation of what you just said is that 
so we have our conscious and we have our subconscious um, and then we have our super conscious and i would say our super conscious that's when so if we're thinking about for example the seven chakras and we're thinking about the crown or we're thinking about god the universe so that would be our super conscious um so from what i'm hearing is so there's not there's nothing i actually have to do i'm the the, the my brain waves or the, the the information that the, the activity that's happening in my brain is being transmitted into a device and then it's being transmitted back to me and then that's and then and then that sub and that's feeding my subconscious to make me more aware of my of my thoughts or my emotions i like to think of it and not as necessarily even subconscious we're talking about primal we're talking about reptilian we're talking about you know the 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 parts of your brain that are instinctual that has to do about survival, survival. So what's happening is if you've ever been on a, in, a, in a car and you drive on the freeway and maybe you drifted off a little bit too far and you hear these little digits on the road, like has that ever happened to you when you hear these little, these little bumps? Like they put that there to be a guide for you to know what you're going too far. And okay. that doesn't put you back onto the road. That just gives you the information of what you should do and typically when you hear those digits you're like oh what is going on and you straighten yourself out so when the brain can have it have information fed back to itself in real time the brain can act and operate in that same fashion when it picks up that information so it's not necessarily training training the subconscious per se but it's training the the the, the central nervous system which is again outside of your conscious participation because if it starts to get warm in the room and you start to sweat well, Shanta, you didn't turn that sweat gland on. Your your brain did that on your behalf. And this is how stress and trauma works. If, if something like if an explosion went off, like right now, I'm going to react, but I'm not consciously reacting as David. That's the body naturally react, react. The body keeps the score of all of the traumas we experience. It's the body that's really in control of all that. We're kind of like a, a passenger when it comes to those types of things. Okay, and I wanna talk about that. I wanna, you said the central ner nervous system. So I wanna talk about um, inflammation and the impact of stress and trauma on the body. And then some of the benefits of, 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 of participating in the circuits at inception. But before I do that, I wanna check in with, in, with the audience. We have uh, uh, Falcon, he's watching from Uganda. Uh, and so thank you so much for, for tuning in. And uh, we have Raquel. Raquel is watching from Las Vegas. And also we have Lorinda. She's in Chicago. And, um, and I'm not sure if we answered this, but I'll repeat the question. So what technology and approaches are used to assess the best approach? For, yeah, this is a good question. So what technology and approaches are used to assess the best approach for each individual? Well, it's not about using technology to assess you at this point. Um, I, I used to use a brain technology back in 2007 called brainwave optimization. I had seen over a thousand brain maps in that time frame. And in those that time frame, everyone whose brain map I saw, I would say probably 90% of them were stuck in a stress response. So when you look at 70 to 90% of doctor's visits are due to stress-related illnesses. You know, 60% of Americans suffer from sleep deprivation. Um, the list goes on and on. So when when you come in, it's like it's not really assessment that we need to do. You you're dealing with everything everybody else is deal, dealing with because you have a brain and body and a central nervous system just like everybody else as well. So when you come in, you're going to go through a very similar program as everybody else. You're not any different, even though you may have different symptomology, but your symptomology is still just a a survival uh, ad adaptation or response, right? But we don't worry about uh, symptoms. We focus on systems of the body. So in terms of assessments, we don't, you know, we'll take in some information just to give really more for you and your your awareness to, to be able to know where you are. But for us, that data is not necessarily uh, important. Um, but we use the technology to help, again, support people's systems. And that's where, that's where the, you know, the magic is. It's, about getting the brain and the body to normalize and come out of the states of defense, 
you can't you can't thrive in life and be stuck using all your resources for survival. It just doesn't work. Yes. And um, Brandarius Johnson in Las Vegas, he wants to know, is your are your services age specific? Um, the, the youngest that I've done um, is about two years old. And that comes to brain training. Of course, I wouldn't put a two year old in a float tank, but they can still benefit. And then the oldest I've done is a 98. So you've got a wide range. Again, you know, even with neurofeedback, they're using neurofeedback on horses and dogs. So again, our nervous system, it's not about typically age, but again, certain services, like you're not gonna put a kid in, inside a flotation tank. Yeah, so you have, um, cause from my understanding, okay, so you're, so for everyone in the audience, Inception is located in Farmington Hills, Michigan, but you also, you're traveling to my understanding, am I correct? Um, we've done we've done a boot camp recently in Dallas where we took a, a couple of our services down there and, and, and about ten individuals went through a uh, a boot camp four day boot camp program where they experienced things like brain training, red light therapy, and ground therapy as well over that time frame. So that's something that we're we're starting to kind of do, but um, we don't have any plans for the second just yet. And, and what's um, you said ground therapy? And the, um, I, th I think you just said red, 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 red light, red light. what's that? Photobiomodulation, red light therapy is a wave of uh, light, um, the spectrum of light that is used far infrared light and light has a profound effect on your body, specifically with reducing inflammation, improving um, ATP energy production. Um, it's also been good to show good for acne, um, collagen production. So increase athletic performance because again you're you're speeding up, and, and I don't like to use the word speed, but you're kind of normalizing um, the body's response to be able to heal itself through light. So that's that's one of the technologies. There's over probably about a thousand peer-reviewed studies on red light therapy currently, um, and we use that um, in our, our boot circuit. And ground okay. therapy, ground therapy is another thing that we um, we have a product called. Um, Intertech with um, Reconnect Ground Therapy. We partner with Clint Ober, who is the rediscoverer of earthing or AKA grounding, which is one we were never supposed to have our feet, uh, you know, off the surface of the earth. We're supposed to be barefoot to the surface of the earth because the surface of the earth actually provides us with um, electrons that our body, bodies need because we're actually being bombarded with electrical signals from, you know, TV, cell phone, electrical outlets in your home, right? So once that starts to build that charge in your body, that creates chronic inflammation. Now we know inflammation in itself is just the body trying to heal itself, but when you're chronically inflamed, now you start to have a whole host of issues. And if you look at inflammation, cardiovascular disease, strokes, uh, cancers, uh, things like fibromyalgia, all your autoimmune, they're all inflammatory issues and so diabetes all of that is just all chronic inflammation so working with Clint who's uh spent over close to 30 million dollars on doing 26 peer-reviewed studies to show the efficacy of us putting our feet back to the earth and using the ground therapy product that we use which again it, it normalizes and takes that charge out of our bodies and now we're not walking around again with chronically inflamed so those are two therapies that we introduced to um, the boot camp, and we're actually going to be introducing it to uh, sometime soon as well. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, one of the things, so it makes, so you're, what you've done is you, you're, you've given us the scientific explanation um, when you explained uh, ground therapy or, or grounding. Um, often your, your therapist or, um, other individuals who are on the path for self-discovery and awareness and enlightenment, you know, it's, you know, go out in nature. Don't you feel better in nature? It, you know, your health and wellness grows. It's go out, spend some time in fresh air, look at the flowers, look at the trees, be present. And it's also good for your physical health and, and, men, and mental health, but just the, um, 
Now, this is just this is science. This is biology, chemistry, um, just the, the the molecules and, and everything that the earth is made of. So are we. And so to, to be in nature is to be one with the earth. The earth supplies us for you know what we need, the oxygen and everything. So that's why mentally you feel better when you go outside. You get a fr when you um, uh, take a fresh breath of air or when you're out in nature and you're um, being conscious of the trees and, and everything that's surrounding you. So again, that's your physical and then also your mental. And then with the um, infrared technology that you mentioned, as you were speaking, I was thinking about Anthony Joshua. I'm a big boxing fan okay. and, and he actually, he has an infrared room that he goes into um, as a part of his training for his recovery. And so your explanation for that, it, I, again, your more scientific explanation helped me to understand, okay, so that's what Anthony Joshua is doing and that's why he's doing it. And so I can connect right. the two. And it also makes me think of um, a hyperbaric chamber. I know some boxers and, and then individuals that when they have physical injury from surgery or even when their brain has had um, a, a certain point of period where they haven't had oxygen, such as a drowning victim, Mm -hmm. they, um, there's a hyperbaric uh, chamber that, that also helps with stem cell production and different things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, that, I, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I was just trying to connect the dots and making sure that my audience, we can connect the dots as well. Yeah. Um, so so in, in the last 15 years, going on 15 more than that longer, let's say 17 years, I've done a, I had a list. I have to look at my list now, but I've done over 60 different healing modalities um you know out there in the space if you want to call them complimentary i've i've done just about all of them you know um and they all have a kind of like overlapping effect um and it's they're all out there to help us support you know again the systems of the body so when a person comes in like you said if they have like tbi you know i refer people to go do hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy because i i know if inception doesn't have it i know the path that you can go down and still get to get what you need you know um but also that these therapies, they've been around for a long time. It's just our people were not privy to that information. And now with social media, you know, they can see someone like me doing it. Again, I've been doing it 16, 17 years by myself. So, um, but now they can see someone like me and they can see me come in and organize it for us. I had to organize these these things and the why, why you use this here, why you do this now, you know, because you can go find another place that maybe has some similar tools, but if you don't have the, the understanding, if you don't have, what are you trying to accomplish? Is it so, you know, and I, I understand that we're all just really trying to feel better, you know, at the end of the day. So how do we help you to feel better? What is it that, that, that the system needs? What is it that the human organism needs? And that's what Inception is really built upon. It's that journey of me filtering through all these different technologies, one, for myself and helping myself. And that's why I feel I feel more empowered um, because of doing my own work and understanding that nobody can really tell me anything outside of, you know, my journey. I know what I went through. I know what, where I was and where I am currently. So. We just want to give people the, the tools to support them in the, um, you know, in the next couple of years. What we do will become like everybody will know about. Oh, I brain train. Oh, I do red light therapy. Oh, I do, you know, X, Y, Z. Just like how many people didn't know about the physical gym before. That was a, a quote unquote rich people thing. People didn't go into the gym in 1999 like that. I think I had my first gym membership at around that time. And. But except now, you up on the West Coast, except if you, I grew up in Las Vegas, so yeah, that I wasn't think, a thing in the Midwest. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think it's, it it depends on where you grew where you grew up, but also I like the fact that you said you know what a lot of us we don't know about this um this information and this technology, and I appreciate the fact that you're going into black communities, you're going into communities of color, you're going into urban communities, and you are able to communicate and educate people that um, 
those researchers, those peer reviewed. Um, so the, those researchers, those sciences and the, and the medical field and the alternative medicine, homeopathic and however we want to call it, a lot of those individuals who are leading those efforts, they are not able to connect and communicate with the same audience that you are. So I think it's important for people like you, myself, and then even my viewers for the information that we have to be able to communicate. Uh, yes, we speak as much as possible plain language, but at the same time, and we meet people where they're at, but at the same time, our goal for me is to elevate people and to to educate them to increase their knowledge, to increase their vocabulary and decrease and increase their understanding so they can use the information to make decisions for themselves and their families. Yeah, I mean, you got it. You hit the nail on the head. That's that's exactly that's why I tell people I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. And it, and it, was, it was good for me not to be those things. And the reason why I say that, because if you are in that field, you've been trained a specific way. And a lot of times it's hard for you to see outside of how you've been trained. Well, I didn't have that training, so I don't have that conditioning about, well, this is how you do this. So it gave me the ability to think out of my own box, because that's my background in engineering, network in, uh, engineering and management, troubleshooting computers. So I began troubleshooting myself. How do I overcome anxiety, even though the marketplace is telling me that this is how you do it? You take these pills or you sit down and you talk to someone, which are both things that are helpful. But when that's the primary source, that's when it becomes unhelpful. It becomes unhelpful when you're stuck at the therapist, you're stuck on medication because our brain and our body can adapt. But what is it adapting to is the question. So that's what an inception is, just an environment so that your system can come and adapt to rest you know, rest, relaxation. And so we made Inception for it can look a certain way so that the, but we, how we see it, it's not a threat to us. It looks safe. It looks inviting. It looks pleasing for me to start my own work. But when you come from another direction, it can look kind of like, well, I don't know if I, you know, people think I'm crazy because I go to certain places. Well, we've made it. We've normalized it. We've brought in Hip hop artists, we brought in, you know, politicians, we brought in uh, celebrities. There's no excuse. Everybody, everybody has access to this, and we've made it affordable too. That's another big thing. You go out, you go out, go out to Los Angeles and go to my counterparts' uh, location and watch them charge you thirty five hundred dollars a month when you can come in and do one circuit for ninety nine, or you can do a boot camp for three hundred and ninety six dollars. You cannot even get that anywhere else, you know, based on these services. But I'm OK with that because, again, Inception is going to normalize that. And, and again, the more we can normalize it, the more we can bring down cost as well. Yes. And um, and also listening to you. So just so you know, my background, I have a background in um, I work with researchers and I do um, evaluation. So what I do, um, qualitative data analysis. I listen to, I pick up on themes. And so one of the themes that I um, heard was trust and, and building trust. And we are in a state right now where we don't have trust in our um, government. A lot of people, I, sh I shouldn't say we, a lot of people don't have trust in the government, the federal government or their state or local governments, and then also in the public health or healthcare field. So there's a lot of trust building that needs to be done. And there's a lot of historical trauma and a lot of historical factual things that have happened to why people don't trust. And so I'm thinking COVID-19 and the COVID-19 vaccines. And my thing is, um, if we don't want to trust, and then even just cancer, diet, all of the um, all of the diseases that you mentioned that as a that's a cause of inflammation. So no inception going to in, going to inception is not going to cure or um, necessarily prevent these things if you are not using a holistic approach. So there's also um, a, a, a plain diet versus having uh, eating foods rich in, in fats and oils and carbohydrates there. I mean, there, it's a lifestyle and these it's, choices. it's all about choices. And, and as you know, if you've listened, listened to me on live before is I, I consider everything mental health. There's no such thing as physical health. There's mental health. 
That's it. Because everything affects your mental. And your mental is the driving force behind everything that you do. So even what you breathe, you breathe in mold, guess what? That's going to affect your brain. If you drink fluoride water, guess what? That's going to affect your brain. If you're disconnected from the earth, we talk about brain inflammation. So when we when we talk about mental health, it's like this, not just from the brain that sits in here, but also from the spirit or the mind, all that's being impacted when the body is using all its resources to fight mold, air, poor water quality, poor food quality, constant residual threat within your environment. Like all of those factors affect us. So we, even though we call ourselves a mental health gym, it's like, like you said, it's all lifestyle. You know, I was asked on um, the Breakfast Club what I thought about, you know, diet changing uh, mental health. And I think I shocked some people by what I said, but I needed it to be in specific context. Because if you know anything about your brain and your body, when it goes into the stress response, your immune system shuts down. Your, your digestion system shuts down. So if you can go buy all the top quality food, but if you're stuck in a stress response, it's not about what you ate. It's about what you absorbed. What did you absorb when you were stuck in those patterns? So it's a yeah. lot of weight. Suppressed, right. And if, you're immune, and if your immune system is suppressed, if your body's um, focused on fighting off of one thing, it can't function and correctly. fight everything. Yeah, exactly. So that's where the, the if we look at, you know, and I, I, I so appreciate all the people who I learned from over the years, from the David Briselli, Dr. David Briselli, you know, created trauma release exercises from Lee Gertis over at Brain State Technologies, um, you know, Dr. Um, Bob Scare, Robert Scare, who's a neurologist out of uh, Colorado and a traumatologist, like he wrote the book, The Body Keeps the Score. These people are Stephen Porges with polyvagal therapy, Peter Levine, Waking the Tiger. All these people have been in this field. Um, Dr. Gabor Mate, um, um, he wrote the book, The Myth of Normal. So these people have been in this field sounding this alarm for a long time. But it's not true. It's not conventional. And, not and conventional. And it actually gets to root causes. Everybody is else is, is going after symptom but what is the root cause what is it that's why when we talk about trauma trauma has to put you in a very defensive state and if you stay stuck in that the very defensive state again can i catch a football if i'm like this <laughs> you know can i can i throw a punch if i'm like this i can't i can't basically go on the offense in life when i'm stuck in defense all the time so these guys who wrote these books and had all this stuff is like, OK, it took someone like me to go in and sit down and understand it and say, well, how do I make this appealing to us? And I used the word sexy years ago. I think it was about 10 years ago. I sat in a room with my mom and I said, I'm going to make this sexy and appealing. And I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I think at this point I've done a a decent job to this to this degree and we're going to keep adding layers to make it even better um but but that's what it is it's taking stuff that already existed N nothing's new in life in general period you know everything is a creation of something else you know um everything at inception mimics something so you, you float tank you go to dead sea float float in the dead sea Obviously, there's no um, light sound when you're in a flow tank, but there's, this, there's you know, minerals. It's a mineral bath. Then you also have isolation. Like Jesus went out into the wilderness, right? Like no, no stimulus, right? Very reduced stimulus. These practices have not been around. I mean, they have been around for a long time. We've just used our technological minds to say, well, how can I bring this and then really if i want to call it um pinpoint and really project it like how do i make it even like a um a stronger approach by using what's already in nature per se so that, i'm just saying that to say to all the listeners that understand that this is what inception is is not really abnormal it may be abnormal to a lot of people who are seeing it for the first time but 
these things have been around for a long time. They just support you. You are the cure. You are the healer, not Inception. Inception supports you who whose body can heal itself. And that's what we really need to come to in our consciousness to understand. No, you don't have to stay stuck with post-traumatic stress. You can move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth. That is in the science currently. It's just that it takes it takes effort to do it. And that's the hard part. Sorry, I went on my little rant there. So no, it's okay. It's okay. And um, and that's what I like about this show because it's unscripted and it's unedited. It's just live, and then it's going to be permanent on uh, you know on on YouTube on the internet. And um, and you never know who's going to watch this. And and you actually have people. And some of these questions, I know. Um, I'm going to go to the chat box, but some of these questions that people are asking, like I know for sure, Brian Darius, he um, he works. He's a motivational speaker, but he also works in the space of suicide prevention. Uh And and so some of these questions that people are asking, they're asking for a reason because they're trying to figure out how they can benefit and serve the the other people that they're working with. And so I really appreciate um, your feedback and your quote unquote rant. And so, um, Raquel, uh, when we were talking about grounding, um, she says that she um, I've recently been very interested in grounding information. And this is right on time. And um, she also says people making money don't want us to know another way besides the way that benefits them. Or it's just this, this systems. And then that's where earlier you mentioned conditioning. So we have to uncondition ourselves as well. That's, that's, the, that's the hardest part of getting through the conditioning of. And again, I, I have friends who are in the medical system and we have these conversations. And a lot of them, they um, deal with um, it's a term called um, not compassion fatigue, but um, moral injury. Moral injury when you if you're a doctor and you start to read things that can help your patient, right? And you understand there's different ways to help your patient, but you have to do it this very specific way. Then you become morally injured because you know, it's a better way, but you can't say anything about that better way. And also, and so I had a conversation yesterday. Well, this week I've had different conversations with individuals, but um, yesterday I had a conversation with a MD and he is um, he, he practices medicine, but also he has a medical business and he has a network of over 1000 um, other MDs. Mm-hmm. And and he was just, he was not in the same terms, but he was basically saying that, you know, they have burnout. They he said, you have to understand they listen to they meet these patients all day and they listen to their 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 you know their their problems and then i heard um just recently someone that i know she's a licensed um licensed clinical uh counselor and then she, she was talking about counselor and therapist their burnout so there's the burnout but then also another conversation i had earlier was the fact that the majority of our the doctors in the united states they are employees so they are employed by health and medical systems right, and so they Exactly. So they go to HR. They just like anybody else that has a regular um, nine to five. You do something, you can get demoted. You can get points taken away. You go to HR. You can get fired and and different things like that. And that can impact their license, their livelihood. They spent years and years um, doing this. Listen, and, I had a friend who went through res- who's going through residency, and they had her working twenty four hour shifts. So my thought process is if you're working a 24 hour shift, how can you actually be of value to anybody working a 24 hour shift? So how does that even promote health? That doesn't even promote health when the people who you're looking to serve other people, you're burning them out. You know, so it's it's that. And again, like you said, when we talk about compassion fatigue and vicarious trauma. So when we talk about burnout, like a burnout is another word. I want to know the mechanics. Like, right? So in burnout, your brain, if it, if I hear a story, my brain still has to react to that story the same way, whether it's really in front of me or in my mind. The brain can't tell the difference between what's real and what's fake. That's why people have burnout because the system 
the nervous system still has to go to fight or flight or freeze response. You know, it doesn't matter if it's if I'm playing a video game or if it's really in front of me. Right. And this is where burnout comes from. It's just our systems don't have support. And support comes in the forms of, hey, resting, having days off. And one big thing, not just resting, being able to regulate after stress from. And what I mean about that is if if you look at animals in the wild, let's say a lion was chasing a gazelle. If that gazelle got away, and it's all based on Dr. David Berselli's work with trauma relief exercises, what I've been teaching for the last 14 years. But if that gazelle gets away from the lion, what he does is he shakes. He's shaking. Because what happened when that lion chased the gazelle? The gazelle went into fight or flight. All the endorphins, the um, um, the adrenaline and of course all that pumped up and got the blood rushing to the limbs to get what the pupils dilate because I need to get out of here, right? So after the, the gazelle got out of there and made it, it still has that residual energy charge built up, right? So how does the animal get rid of the charge? The animal dissipates, the animal shakes. And the animal is also connected to the ground barefoot where it discharges the energy into the ground. So the animal doesn't have post-traumatic stress. The animal goes another hundred yards up and starts to eat grass again like it was never chased. But what about us? We have the same mechanic to discharge the energy. But if you saw me shaking, what would a person do? Oh, oh, it's okay. Okay, stop. Don't you know you would try to stop me from trying to get the energy out of my body, that's a part of our discharge mechanism because energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. This is a, a, a form of emotional thermodynamics where the body is trying to get that out, but we hold it in. We've held all that energy now into our body as trapped. And this is what I mean by us being stuck. So the adrenaline the cortisol, the sympathetic nervous system is still engaged. They even have a term for this now called hyperactive sympathetic syndrome. And another term they call post-traumatic stress. But really what it is is your nervous system is dysregulated. You did not discharge and get that out of you. And now it's stuck in procedural memory. So now you got triggered every time you get around a lion. You know, you, 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 you don't know if it's attacking you or not. And I'm using that obviously when we're not around any lions. But... These are the mechanics. So when That's we talk chronic, about so really quick, so chronic stress, and it's no different from when some people have interaction with police officers and it's the same thing. society. Yes, it's the same thing. Again, it don't matter. I went and played VR, virtual reality game, the other the other week for a friend of mine's birthday. And when we're in that VR game, this this this. It was a dinosaur game. It took me up in the air and dropped me. I literally felt like I was falling, right? Because your brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's fake. So when all these zombies and stuff is coming at me, I'm still jumping and reacting. Now, I consciously know I'm in this game, right? But why am I responding that way? Because the body is already hard coded to protect you. So when we talk about our neighborhood and we talk about police, all that conditioning is conditioning us to respond in a in a not in a survival type of way. I need to get away from threat. Look at all of our behavioral issues in society is all unresolved trauma, uh, poor program. That's all of it. Every person who's in jail, every person, whatever is all mental, emotional at the end of the day. And this is why this is why it was good. The pandemic happened. So then. We had to hit a breaking point because the breaking point gave us clarity or contrast to know I am overwhelmed. But you've been overwhelmed. You just didn't you didn't have the awareness. You needed to go a little bit further to see if you keep going that far, you're not going to make it. And a lot of us, a lot of people didn't make it. What did they die from? They died from stress. You only ever die from stress in life. If you fell out of a plane and you impacted, you hit the ground, what killed you? The stress of the impact. If you ate something that was poisonous, your body couldn't recover from it. What was that? Would you die from the stress of the body not being able to recover fast enough? So it's all stress. 
it's just different forms of it. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. And so um, before we sign off, let's uh, check in into the uh, chat box. We have, um, so again, Brendarius, he says, uh, keep up the great work, fam. And uh, we have Reverend Jenkins, and she's watching from Bowie, Maryland. And, and thank you for tuning in. She um, she listens to all the shows. And so Brendarius, he checks in. Um, Raquel, she's always watching. And she says good information about the effect of stress on the immune system. And then we have Dr. Arthur um, Webb. And Dr. Webb says, nice to see the focus in an area that we know is a source of, a source of pathology but traditional medicine does not address. It is true that training in a specialty of medicine often limits one's scope. Yeah, and I and I and so just to even uh, Doctor Doctor Webb, just to just to talk about that too quickly is just that we our systems and what we're trying to do with Inception. Inception, I'm building my own little system now. It's not little, but my own system of how to do things, and I want to incorporate other people and other doctors who fall in line and resonate with that, we need the toolbox to be more comprehensive. The first thing that I would do if a person came into the hospital and they had some type of traumatic stuff, they need to brain train. They need to get their nervous system, you know, calm down. You know, even during, during surgery, surgery, they have to ground you because they can literally basically cause you to have a heart attack they go opening you up and they and they're all in your systems even as a technician i have to ground myself to work on motherboards it's the same thing right so we need a, a toolbox and i've been i've been working with people who have a, a psychiatrist on our advisory board i have a, a medical doctor who's a gynecologist i have a psychologist and my mom's 20 years social worker so we're just taking all this information saying how can we make the best comprehensive system that's going to help our people when they come through, they have a full chronological order of what to do, right? And so you're not thinking, you know, I don't know what to do. Like we have people come in, they're suicidal. I'm like this, get them in, get them their nervous systems balanced. It doesn't make it where they're perfect or anything. It just, can they sleep at night? If you can sleep at night, if you can rest, then that means you have a sense of safety. You know, so we're we're working with people in all across the whole spectrum of fields who understand exactly what I'm talking about and to, to build more of a comprehensive system so our people can get exactly what they need when they need it. Okay. And um, Reverend Jenkins, she says holistic medicine, our bodies can heal themselves. Our and bodies we have can, they do. Yes, they do. They regenerate. I was I was telling a friend, I, I know we're running out of time, but I was telling a friend just about just like how amazing the earth is. And we have Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy's checking in from Las Vegas. And I was just telling her, um, you know, look at look at the things that we've done to the earth. So we can look at it from two perspectives from. So I'm thinking environmental health. You know, we've dropped bombs on the earth. Look at the, our air quality, all the technology. We have plastic in the ocean, our trash and just. Just, just the things that the negative things we've done to the earth, but at the same time, the earth is so amazing that it it um, it rejuvenates, and the and 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 the earth still supplies us with everything that we need, and it, and we're here, we're part of the earth, so that means that we're the same. It's just it's just connecting and just realizing and just recognizing that and being more intentional. We're we're a cell in a bigger body. The earth is the bigger body. The birth, the earth is our biosphere that we live in. So when you start looking at the 73 trillion cells in your body, those are miniature people living inside of you. They're you. So if you don't take care of those 70 trillion cells, if you don't govern them, govern them properly, or if you spend all your money on defense, look at what's happening in our country. If you spend all your money on defense, then your infrastructure, look what's happening to in Dallas, that's all infrastructure. But that we were warned about. So just, yeah. you know, everything that you're saying, I swear, last night I just had this conversation. So in the U.S., we have 16 critical infrastructures. And if so, if anyone who's into homeland security or if you take a course online, you'll learn about these 16 critical infrastructures. Or if you're trying to um, uh, combat terrorism, whether it's um, domestic or international terrorism, uh, you 
you're you're trained to know about these 16 critical infrastructures and the importance of protecting them. And so previous administrations, the um, before the Trump administration, um, President Obama, he actually and, and other presidents and other teams and uh, from not just from the um, executive branch, but these states, they the information is there. They're being advised on technology, but it's poor leadership. Like you said about Texas, it's their infrastructure. They don't have the infrastructure. Climate change, you have these people that's telling you, all of these scientists and environmental people and people who are actually working out, geologists in the field, and they're saying, hey, this is what's to come. You have the meteorologists. Everyone's telling well, you. They're, they're telling us that, and they've been telling us for 15 years that I've known we're on, we're on mass the X. You know what that is? That's mass extinction. We, we're losing hundreds of thousands of organisms on a yearly basis. And that's all because of how we've been treating the earth. But think about it. If 70 to 90 percent of hospital visits are due to stress related illnesses, that's because you don't you're not taking care of yourself because you've never been taught how to really do that. You've been taught that you need to go buy things to feel better about yourself. So if you if that's the way that you take care of yourself, why would you even care about the earth? You don't because you don't even have the awareness to take care of the vessel that you live in on a day to day basis. Why would this external vessel that we are part of? Why would it be any different? Yeah. So but I, I understand what they're saying about instinct uh, extinction. Um, however, I think that the, the earth is self renewal. If anything, will be destroyed, just like with no, in, the, in the earth will the earth yeah. will survive. Extinction is for us, not the earth. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you watch that David Attenborough documentary on Netflix where he's a part of uh National Grid Geographic and he's been in all different places since like we were born. You know, he's been all these magnific magnificent places and he's seen the transition that's been happening. And as he says, the earth will survive. The earth will rebuild itself on top of our bones, and that may sound very gruesome, but that's the real reality. The earth will repair itself. We just won't be here. But we're a major contributor to how the earth is responding right now. But then also um, we have a lot of, we have the solar ice caps and there's a lot of melting. So there was a lot of things that were frozen for thousands of years. So just yeah. like how we're losing oh, things, no. just like how we're losing things, we, there's new things that are being introduced to us that we haven't yeah. experienced in in our lifetimes. There's and bacteria so, in there that's coming out that they're already talking about um, that we don't even know about. So, yes, COVID. For example, they, people think that COVID is something. Just imagine what else is being released into our water stream. So anyway, yeah. we can keep going and going. Um, but just food for thought for everyone. And and that again, that's the purpose of the show. The show is to um, to enlighten, inspire, but also to to prompt you to you know. I'm I'm hoping that you know from these different guests that I'm bringing on that you are inspired to, you know, I, I'm interested more in this topic and this is something that I'm going to research, right? And we already talked about in the past about making sure that when we do our research that we're looking at credible sources as well. Um, so that's another show, another topic. And just before we sign off, we have Terry. Terry's checking in from the um, Metro Baltimore area. And she says the body does keep the score. Wonderful ana analogy of the prey animal and how to normalize self-regulation. And, 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 when that, and when that becomes very normal, we'll thrive when we understand that concept, as you could say. Yes, self-regulation, okay. And she also says that, um, COVID pandemic presents us opportunity to reimagine mental health, behavioral health, and medicine to shift to comprehensive health and wellness rather than fragmented care. I, I like that. That's that's a that's a good statement, and that's that's exactly what my mission and my purpose is to do. Is to, to to be a part of that. Yeah. And my mother is watching from Las Vegas. And she says that this is a great topic and helpful information. And she was talking about some of the things that she does to feel better from stress, such as she goes outside in the yard and she paints and she rides her bike. So she's finding therapeutic ways for her to, to deal, with, deal with and manage stress. So again, David, 
Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, everyone, you can follow David on Instagram at Mr. David McCuller. Uh, also, Inception. Inception is located in Farmington Hills, Michigan. However, there are opportunities for um, for travel. And then, and David, are you looking to expand and and kind of expand as a chain or maybe even franchise opportunities? So we will be doing franchising in, in 2022. It would have been 2021, but obviously the COVID thing pushed, it, pushed our timeline back. But so we will have franchise opportunities and we do have home products for people to, 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 to use specifically with grounding. As I mentioned earlier, to be able to take care of themselves in that way and get reconnected back to the earth. Yes, and so for more information about Inception, and uh, please do visit the website InceptionEP.com. Any closing remarks before we sign off? No, thank you. I appreciate you ha for having me. I mean, some of the remarks that your um, your um, your audience made were definitely is encouraging and is right on time. We do need to move from healthcare to self-care. So it's all about us taking care of ourselves. We are we need to become the doctors of our own selves. And then use the other doctor that again giving us support to how I'm doctoring myself, you know. But that's it. We need to take back our power. And once we take back our power, then we can move in a more um, helpful way. Yeah, and then also um, independence, keep changing the systems when um, when there are doctors that have their private practices. I know some of us are used to going to the larger healthcare systems, but if we have the option to have a primary care physician um, that's, that's independent, you know, maybe support those. And then also, you know, I think it's important for us to, we have um, STEM and you have your HBCUs and they're trying to increase the, the pipeline for underrepresented minorities in STEM and medicine, but to just, just to make sure that we um, also have these conversations with our youth and with our children to expose them to some of the other um, opportunity, the other opportunities that are that are out there in addition to conventional medicine, con con conventional sciences and conventional practices. So everyone, I am Shanta Jackson and my purpose in life is to help people to help themselves and others. You can learn more about me at shantajackson.com.